fellow bookworm Satibra's Den, my name is Whitney and we just finished reading My Sergey by Ekaterina Gordieva with E.M. Swift and this book is so beautiful. I know it says it's a love story but I think it's really empowering for women as well um, just in general without the love aspect between her and Sergey even though that plays a big part in her journey. Uh, so I definitely, you know, stick around. I'm going to talk about this one in just a moment. But before I do, I just want to remind everybody we are going to be starting Freedom's Challenge today by Anne McCaffrey. This is actually the third book in the quartet. We've already read the fourth book. So I'm excited to revisit characters and get a little bit more of the backstory on them. Even though I'm reading them out of order, I think it's going to be just fine. So excited to start that today. And then next Wednesday, we are going to be reading If Wishes Were Horses by Bar Robert Barclay. And this one seems a little bit more romancy. y um, I don't know how I ended up with this one. I don't know if I bought it just because of the horse aspect or somebody gifted it to me of the horse aspect. If you've been watching our Throwback Thursdays, you'll know that we're, I'm right in the middle of my childhood horse obsession. And that did bleed through a little bit as I got older. Um, and I would still pick up books with, like, horses on the cover or horse of the name um, and dogs as well. If I saw a dog on the cover, I'd pick up a book. So I don't know if that's one of these or not. But let me go ahead and read the synopsis for you guys. It says, Wyatt Blaine's life has been touched by unbearable sorrow, and he realizes the only way out is to reach out. So he revives his late wife's horse therapy program by opening the gates of the Blaine family ranch to troubled kids. Never imagining he come face to face with the woman he irrationally blames for everything. Gabby Powers, widow of the man responsible for Wyatt's pain. Still, when she tearfully asks him to help her troubled son, he surprises himself by saying yes. Even more, he's even more surprised by the attraction he feels for this determined but gentle woman. He tries to tell himself she's part of a painful past he only wants to forget. But love has a way of making its own plans. And little by little, Wyatt allows himself to see what his heart already knows. That his greatest wish will, will be to spend the rest of his life with Gabby. So, this one we're going to read next Wednesday, of course. But we'll see if we enjoy it and if it will stay on our shelf. So, um, and that's weekly Wednesday read caught up. Just a reminder, 25 days of book miss. There's going to be a couple videos coming out. Um, the first one, the compilation of when I was opening them all and reading the synopsis of each one should already be out or should be coming out in the next couple days. So keep an eye out for that one or check to see if it's already up. And then I'm also doing one where I'm ranking the books I got from the ones I'm least excited for to the ones I'm most excited for. So definitely keep an eye out for that video as well. We are, we just resumed, um... Our book of the month, this past Monday, we started reading Lady Boss. And so the first set of discussion questions for the first chapter set will be coming out this coming Monday. So if you want to participate in that, it's never too late. The breakdown and links where you can pick up the book are down below. And then you can just read the chapter sets, come find the video, and, you know, see what you think about the discussion questions. And then at the end of the month, I do discussion questions that are slightly different that cover the whole book over on my website. So you can definitely participate over there as well. Uh, and other than that, we are going to be resuming our series Saturday uh, starting the new year. So we're going to be, be reading Blood Rites, which is the sixth one in the Dresden File series. Uh, those won't come out every Saturday, but I'll just give you an update as I work my way through the series. And I'm still working my way through the ABC Author Challenge. I'm currently on the F. F author Thomas Flanagan Tenants of Time which is a thick book I have started it but it's going to take me a little while to get through it um, and then that video will be on its own because it's such a big book I think it needs its own video and then I'll jump into some of the other authors for the challenge but lots happening definitely if you're not already please do subscribe hit the bell notification and then give this video a like while you're at it uh, it really does help the channel out. So now that that's all out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about my Sergey. So it is a love story. You know, it explains her journey with Sergey. 
But reading this as an adult, it really felt more like a coming of age story and then just her finding herself as a woman. Um, the love aspect definitely played a part in that and her journey was with, just happened to be with Sergei. But I think it goes deeper than just the love between them. Um, I mean, that comes more to the forefront as you get more into the later part of the book. Um, but the beginning part of the book, she's so young compared to him. Like, I think there's four years different, four or five. I think it's four, though. Um, because he died when he was 28 and she was 24. So, um, so yeah. So, when initially, when they're paired together, she's 11, he's 15. Um, and so, when you're that young, that's kind of a bigger age gap. Uh, and so it's just, you know, her kind of coming into her own, uh, and their journey in figure skating too, between different coaches and their journey to the Olympics and such. One thing I really liked is in the beginning when she's really young and there's not that romantic interest between them yet, they go to the Calgary Olympics and then it kind of comes full circle back in the later part of the book, just before he passes away, they go to the Olympics again, and they're doing a lot of the same shows in a lot of the same areas they did when they were, were kids leading up to the Olympics. And so it kind of came full circle, which I thought, I don't know if she realized that, but I thought that was really, really beautiful. Um, it also, you know, my sister recently lost her husband, and that made me able to kind of understand more how my sister felt a little bit because at one point point she talks about the hardest part for her was sleeping alone and then also just figuring out what to do now that she was alone because they did everything together like they were constantly together and I know especially the sleeping alone my sister has really struggled with that and so like it just kind of you know reading this book it really helped me relate more to what my sister is going through right now. Because I know she's been really struggling, you know, sleeping alone. And then also just figuring out what to do. Because her and her husband were the type. They did everything together, too. So, she's been really struggling with that. So, that that part, you know, after she lost their day and she was talking about that. That hit a lot closer to home. Just with what my sister's going through. But, and it also just brought back a lot of nostalgia for me. Because I chose to read this book. I chose to get it. My mom, this was, she loved figure skating. And we would watch it, you know, every winter we would watch figure skating. And this was her favorite pairs couple. So she had had this book and I read it as a teenager. Um, and then I, you know, it stuck with me all this time. And so I wanted to pick it up and I finally got it and have it on my shelf now. And that's why we read it, because my mom's birthday um, is is around today. So, uh, definitely a happy birthday to her. But it just brought back a lot of nostalgia. I was pretty young during their time, but I have impressions, you know, of watching. And some of the names, like Scott Hamilton, Brian Boitano, um, Christy Yamaguchi, like all those names are just so familiar f to me from my childhood and constantly watching the figure skating. And so it, it brought back a lot of nostalgia too, but it basically starts, you know, she talks a little bit about her early childhood uh, and how she got started in figure skating when she was four years old, but then it really starts falling on from the time she's 11 and she's paired with Sergey. Um, and then they're saying their whole journey, you know, the whole figure skating journey, you know, between, coaches and traveling the world and how they developed you know their friendship and then their working relationship because at first Sergey wasn't as intense into the skating as she was and he would miss practices and such and so that created issues so it follows their whole journey you know as they develop you know this working relationship their friendship and then eventually that romantic relationship and I don't know, it's just very, very beautiful. And then they're working with different trainers and choreographers. And so the relationship with them 
and the people, you know, the other skaters and such, the friendships they made <clears throat> throughout their time figure skating. Like, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, and it's not really that sad until the last little bit. Like, the bulk of the story is their journey and growing up and coming of age and then, you know, kind of her finding herself as a woman, too. So, um, and then the last part when she loses him is, is just a couple of chapters, you know, losing him and then that kind of the aftermath. Um, so the bulk of the story is not going to make you cry or anything. It's just very, very beautiful. And I like, you know, some of the things, like, she didn't understand anything about um, being intimate with Sergey and her mom never really explained that. And then when she had a baby, like, she had no clue the process. And she had Daria in America, and the process in Russia is different. The men don't participate at all in Russia. And so, you know, they wanted Sergei to come in. They wanted somebody to be with her. Um, and she's talking about the uh, epidural and how they want her to sign all these contracts. And she's like, just give me the shot, you know. So it's just funny because you also have that cultural difference. Uh, and I liked one part, like, I really like learning about the different cultures as well. Because at one part, she's talking about America and how, you know, people are always rushing to get to work and such. And in Russia, you know, when they were younger at least, um, that wasn't the case. You just, you got to work when you got to work and the work would be there and you would get paid your money for doing the work. And I really liked, like, that cultural difference. And she would bring that up a lot, like, the differences between America and then Russia. Um, and then at one point she says, and we never rushed to the grocery store because there was nothing there <laughs> to get any anyway. Uh, which is kind of sad, but just the way she phrased it was, was funny. Um, and she has a very, like, dry sense of humor, which really comes across. And I know, you know, E.M. Swift, helped her write the book and I think he captured her personality. I did kind of go back and watch like different videos of them during their figure skating days. Um, and I think he really captured her, her personality as he was helping her write this book too. And, but yeah, she has a dry sense of humor and it comes through multiple times. Um, and so you kind of get that and it kind of makes you, you chuckle a little bit, but absolutely beautiful book and like I said it's really more of a coming of age story and then her really coming into herself as well um so it's really just her journey and that included Sergey and falling in love with him um and so yeah I think that's it's a beautiful book I would strongly encourage you to read it even if you're not really into figure skating um, even if you're not really into like a romance book, because I think it's a powerful book, especially for any woman to read for sure. And like I said, I like kind of how you get the view of the different cultures as well. So, um, but yeah, definitely one I'm going to be keeping on my shelf. I'm going to be rereading, um, multiple times throughout my lifetime. Uh, just a, a absolutely beautiful story. So strongly encourage you to give us a try. Um, but yeah, that is my Sergey. Again, don't forget, we'll be starting Freedom's Challenge today. And I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys here. Happy reading, everyone. Bye.